Hey guys, thanks for joining me for an episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Wander, the Cult of Barnacle Bay. This is a brand new game being put out by Panda Cult Games, and this is their first title. This is a one to five player game that takes roughly an hour to two hours to play, depending upon the scenario you've chosen to play. And it is a cooperative dungeon crawler, so all the players are working together to meet certain objectives or goals or defeat the, the boss of that level or whatever you've chosen to play as your scenario to win the game. So in the game itself, each player is playing an anamorphic character that is part of the Wanderer's Guild. And the Wanderer's Guild is basically a guild that, it, that goes about the world doing good deeds and helping people and investigating uh, these different occurrences and fighting the, the evil that is in the world. And so they've heard about this small fishing village that it has rumors of mutation and darkness, and so they've sent some of their, their members out to investigate what's going on in this village. And so these members show up to this village and they find that it's shrouded in darkness and that Elder Bane, this horrible sorcerer, has basically cast mutations on all the local fishermen and the different inhabitants of this town. So you have the bear guards that guard this small village turned into bear sharks and the otter fishermen turned into these crab fisherman guys and the clerical bunnies turned into cult fanatical whipping tentacle bunnies that attack with ranged attacks and all these different things. And so your goal in this is to basically try to defeat Elder Bane and help this fishing village. So my opinions of this game so far, this is a title that I've been super excited about. This is probably one of the most anticipated titles for me this year. I found this one at Adepticon the first time and had a chance to sit down and play a couple scenarios and I couldn't get enough of this one. I really enjoyed it. I love dungeon crawlers to begin with and this one just gets it right. They've added little things from different games that they've pulled, and these guys have a lot of experience in this. This is their first title, but they've worked in this industry for a long time with other companies developing these kind of games and developing different games. So they come to this with a lot of experience, and they're really good guys. They definitely need this. They need the Kickstarter. They don't have funds on their own, and so they're needing your guys' help. And let me tell you, this is a great title. If you like Dungeon Crawlers, at all, definitely check this one out. Or if you like cooperative games, this is a title that you need to check out. It has a lot of unique features in it, and it plays very well. So, like I said, each character or each player is going to choose a character they're going to play as, and that character will gain experience as they do different things in the game that will allow them to upgrade their skills. And on top of that, they're going to gain treasure and different items to make them more powerful or be able to do different things throughout the game. So now the game isn't just going to sit idly by. As the heroes gain uh, levels, they're also going to be spawning new monsters. And as the game progresses, if you're playing a campaign, the characters will be able to take their items from scenario to scenario, but the scenarios will also progressively get harder as the enemies are also going to basically level up and become harder for the character. So you're never going to get to that point where your characters are just breezing through everything. This is a game that the, the designers wanted to make challenging and it is challenging you will lose at this game but it's not going to to just beat you into submission this is a great game no matter if you're winning or losing and i like i said i've had a lot of fun with this our there was there was one game that we were playing and we we were doing really well we were going through the game beating everything up just having great rolls and as the game was going on it was getting a little harder we we started taking some damage and we started losing some of our morale that we needed and so if you ever lose all your morale the game is over and you lose and so we were right there and, and my hero it was my turn my hero goes in and he checks out this darkness area and it's a uh it's a test to see if he can open this chest and so i roll the dice roll terribly my my character ends up busting the chest it explodes and kills him and i just look around and the, and the guys are like we just lost and i'm like yeah <laughs> so it's very very interesting i love the game it really grabbed me and the artwork is beautiful that's done on this the tiles the the characters everything is really well done it has a very saturday cartoon feel to it very interesting in a very unique style that i that i haven't seen in a while so this is one that's really really grabbed my attention definitely have a look at it like i said these guys definitely need your help they're not doing this 
any other way and this game needs to be made it needs to come out to the public this is a game that will see many uses on my gaming table throughout the years this is an easy game to teach this is a game that is good for families and for friends and groups this is a game that you need to check out so I'm going to be doing two videos for this one. The video you're watching now is an overview video that I'm just going to give you the basics, ideas of the game, and some of the unique features of it. And then I'm going to be doing one of my basic play videos, which is basically a gameplay video that I'm going to take you guys through a scenario so that you can see how it begins, how it works in the middle, and how it will end. And so, I, like I said, I would definitely recommend checking this out. I will have a link to the Kickstarter page below. And... Without further ado, let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll show you how this one works. The initiative board is a very important part of the game, and has two different modes. You have the basic mode and the advanced mode. On the advanced mode, you're going to have additional icons next to each one of the slots. The initiative track will determine when the players are going to activate their characters, and when the enemies will get to activate their models. It's also going to help in the which character is priority based on the character that is highest on the track, which we're going to go into more later on. Now on the side of the track you have the morale slot, and each scenario will tell you where to place the token on that slot. From there, as when a character loses all their health and is knocked down, they will move this token one space down the track. If the track ever reaches the bottom spot, the players will immediately lose and the mission will be over. At the beginning of each scenario, and during tile, major tile flips, you're going to redo this initiative track by taking one car card for each character that is in play and each enemy that is in play. From there, then you're going to shuffle these up and deal them out starting on the top of this track. And this will be the order in which models are activated. Now one other thing to note is that during a player's turn, instead of activating their model, they can spend their entire activation to shift their, their character either to the top of the initiative track or to the bottom. So let's go ahead and say that Finn here is getting hammered by the, by the enemies. And it's his activation, so he can spend his entire activation to move to the bottom of the track, which will push every other card up on that track and will also change the positions in the advanced mode. So in this way, you can also help uh, mitigate some of the uh, effects of the enemies. So in this situation, we saw that the brute was down here, which would have given him an additional attack, so he would have hit a model for three damage when he attacked, and now he gets an extra defense, which might not necessarily be the best thing, but it will definitely help in so far as his damage that he can dish out. Each character is going to have their own unique character card, which is going to list their character, their character's health, defense, and knowledge. And for defense and knowledge, when they're required to make those checks, they will roll the number of dice equal to the number in that slot. From there, each character is going to have their own unique abilities, and at the beginning of the game, each player will choose one of the two level 1 starting abilities for their character to have for the rest of the game. The other ability will not be used for that scenario. And then as the characters gain experience, they will level up and gain the abilities for that level. So for example, with Kira here, when she makes it to level 2, she will receive plus 1 action. When she makes it to level 3, she will choose one of those two, those two abilities to gain for the rest of the game. Same for level 4, and if she makes it to level 5, she will gain her ultimate ability. From there, each character is also unique in their abilities and will be specialized to their needs. So, for example, with Tank, he is focused more on defense, so his abilities will be more defensive. Where Finn is a ranger, and so his abilities will most likely focus more on his ranging abilities and his range damage. Each hero will also have their own dashboard, which they will place their hero card in the slot there. During the game, the heroes will gain experience points by defeating enemies and doing different things in the scenario. And as they do that, they will gain experience, so they'll move their Inspirix tracker down. And once they move past certain thresholds, they will gain levels. So level 2, when a player reaches 4 experience, will be moved up to level 2, and they will gain an additional action. But the enemies will also spawn one card for that. 
And then same thing for level 3. When they move up to level 3, the enemy will spawn two cards, and the player will gain a new ability. Other than that, the track will also keep track of the player's health, so if as the player takes health damage, they will place those here. You have slots in their right and left hand to equip their items, so Tank will start the game with his starting gear, which is his hammer and his shield. There are also slots here for different items to be placed during the game. The last thing we're going to look at is how combat works. So we're going to take a look at two examples today. We have Ibexus making a ranged attack against some enemies, and Roland making a melee attack against the bear shark. So the first thing is with ranged attacks, we have to check line of sight, and both darkness tiles that have not been revealed and the red lines are going to block line of sight, and line of sight is always determined in orthogonal directions. So straight lines. You can never shoot or move in diagonal directions. So Ibexus here has a problem. He has a darkness tile that has not been revealed yet, so he cannot actually see his enemies. And so his first action during his turn is to move into that space. So we have found a treasure, so he would take the top card from the treasure deck, and then he can go ahead and perform his second action, which he is going to target the enemies. So when you make a range attack, you're going to target one enemy. So we're going to go ahead and go after this otter fisherman here. And Ibexus's firebomb is going to grant him three dice. And he's going to be looking for arrows and critical dice for successes. The more successes he gets, the better he's going to do. And on top of that, his firebomb has an AoE effect, so area of effect. And it will do one wound to each other model in that space per critical that he rolls. So let's go ahead and hope that we get some criticals. All right, so we've gone ahead and rolled. We have one critical, so we're going to get to roll one additional dice. And this is each critical we roll will grant us an additional dice until we stop rolling criticals. So we rolled another critical, so we get another dice. And then finally with Ibexus, his starting ability we took was Mystic Affinity, so he's going to get to re-roll one of his missed results. So he's successfully rolled five hits on the Otter Fisherman, and as you guys can see, the Otter Fisherman has three health and one armor. So the armor is going to remove one of these successful hits, and then the Otter Fisherman will take four damage, which will be enough to kill him, so we'll remove his model, and Ibexus would gain one experience. From there, his area effect also grants him one wound to each enemy in that space per critical he rolled. So he rolled two criticals, which the Zealot Bunnies have two health and no defense. So each one of them will take two wounds, which will eliminate them from that field. And Ibexus will gain two more experience points. Moving over to our second example, we have Roland over here that's going to go ahead and target a bear shark. So with Roland, we're going to need both criticals and axes for success. And he will also roll three dice with his starting cleaver. So we're going to be looking for those results. All right, so with Roland, he rolled two hits, which were two axes and an arrow. So the arrow is going to miss. And then if we check the bear shark's results, he has a defense of two and five health. So these two hits will not penetrate his armor, and so Roland has failed to wound the bear shark. So at this point, let's go ahead and say that it's the bear shark's turn to go. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So the bear shark is going to target a enemy model that is adjacent to him, so in straight lines, again, orthogonal directions. And so Roland is the only character there, so he will target Roland. And the bear shark, as we check his stat, will do two damage to Roland, so Roland will have to make a defensive roll. So Roland will succeed on defense with criticals and shields, and his defense is two. So we're going to roll two dice, and we'll see if we can get any successes. So Roland has failed on both of his rolls, so he is going to take two wounds to his character. Well, I hope that gave you guys a good idea of some of the basic features in the game. And like I said, I will be doing a basic play video to take you guys through a full scenario so you can see how the game plays as well. Like I said, I highly recommend checking this one out, especially if you like cooperative games or dungeon crawlers. This is not one you're going to want to pass up. You will kick yourself later, I promise you. So definitely check this one out. Think about pledging for this. This is a game that is really, really good. So I definitely would recommend checking it out if you guys have a chance. 
and swing by the creators page. I'm sure they would love to hear from you guys as well. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos and leaving me comments. I do really appreciate it. And if you like what I do, if you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking my videos as well, so I can continue bringing some of these great games to you guys. And as always, I'll see you guys later.